friends, it's election night, so I am not in front of the TV, not, uh, not putting myself through that. I voted, uh, I did my part, and we probably won't know anything tonight anyway, even though I'm on the West Coast. I'm reading. So um, for Nonfiction November and also for my book club, which meets on uh, the 13th, um, I'm reading How the Irish Saved Civilization. So I'm on midway through the second chapter of this. So my plan is to finish the second chapter, which is about 25 pages to go in that. And then I'm going to switch over to fiction, Bluebird, Bird, Bluebird by Attica Locke, which is a um, like Texas Ranger crime detective uh, type of story. Um, and I'm a little over halfway through with this one. So this one is really, really good. Um, and I always, if I can, I like to end the evening with fiction rather than nonfiction. It just, I don't know, it's one of those, it's one of those like bookish things that I need to end the day with fiction, not with nonfiction. So I'm going to attempt to stay away from anything election related and just stick to my bookish world. Two nights later now, it's Thursday night, um, 8.42 p.m. I feel like wired right now. I have been just like super, like hy just hyper all day long. Um, so rather than staying in the living room where there is news and uh, the map, um, I'm going to retire to my bedroom for the rest of the night and continue on with Bluebird Bluebird. I am getting very close to finishing it um and it went last night when i was reading it it went from being good to like so good um so uh you know depending on how wide awake i stay i might be able to finish this tonight I'm on 237 of 302 303 so i could finish that tonight um typically i'm getting sleepy by this time um it's not uncommon for me to you know go to bed at 8 30 um uh you know be asleep well before nine um so but i don't think that's gonna happen tonight so anyway how the irish save civilization is going really well um i'm about probably three quarters of the way through that at this point and um the last a little bit has been about saint patrick yeah, which has been, he, um, hmm. there's really, I guess there could be a little bit of a spoiler, which is interesting for a nonfiction book, but there's definitely something that surprised me, so I won't mention it, but, um, yeah, we kind of get St. Patrick's origin story in a way that I'd never heard it before, uh, certainly not the, like, leading the snakes out of Ireland, um, story that we grew up hearing. Oh, hello, buddy. Hey, buddy. Uh, anyhow, <clears throat> this is Stevie, if you don't know Stevie. Um, yeah, so that's going well. I'm going to save that for the morning. I tend, I tend to read, when I'm, especially when I'm reading nonfiction and fiction at the same, same time, I tend to read the nonfiction more in the morning, um, during kind of my morning, uh, my morning reading time, and then switch to fiction in the evening. But tomorrow, so um, my sister and her husband's uh, anniversary is coming up, and I think it's on the the 10th or the 11th it's either on the marine corps birthday or on veterans day um so the kids are going to be spending the night friday and saturday night and tomorrow night friday night is cozy reading night uh so and i've done some cozy reading nights with the kids before so um i'm hoping to be able to actually get at least a little bit of time with that i'm also thinking uh so i'm hoping to get a little bit of you know cozy reading maybe in um with the two big kids um at least with holly the uh the 10 year old she's a big reader um and then maybe we could watch the first harry potter movie it's november it definitely feels like we're getting into harry potter season so for the for the movies i mean it's always harry potter season but for the movies in particular i feel like um, this is a good time. And then also it's finally going to actually be like cool tomorrow. So it's been like right around 80 degrees here pretty much all through October. 
and now into November. Um, and tomorrow it's actually supposed to be in the 60s for the daytime high for the first time. So it's been basically like it feels like spring with changing leaves, um, which is kind of weird. Like I noticed today that um, like I have a farmer's tan um, on my arm um, because, you know, it's November. I'm not going to wear a tank top. Um, anyhow, I'm just uh, I'm just rambling at this point. So I'm going to read Bluebird. Bluebird. Maybe I'll finish it. Um, if not, I will definitely finish it tomorrow. Okay, it is the next morning. As you will have seen, I did not go to bed on time last night. I was just wide awake. I was like... From after lunch yesterday until way too late, I was like hyper. I got back from lunch and I was sitting at my desk and I don't know how long I'd been doing it before I realized that my leg was tapping like a million miles an hour. And I just, as much as an adult can bounce off the walls, I was bouncing off the walls. I don't know, it's like someone, someone slipped me speed or something, I don't know. Um, Anyhow, yeah, it was probably like almost two before I actually went to sleep. So after reading Bluebird Bluebird in bed for quite a while and not feeling any sleepier, I finally just ended up going out to the living room and uh, kind of getting out of the bedroom space to maybe, well, I ended up, I ended up finishing Bluebird Bluebird, which was so good. Um, I can't wait for the next one. It's already out. I just don't have it continuing to follow the life of Darren Matthews. Actually, I don't have the book on me. So, you know, obviously it's it's a it's a crime book. It's about discovering, you know, the the who done it of it, right? So that's that's the basic plot of the the story, but the underlying plot is about Darren Matthews and his own life and what he's going through and then of the systemic issues that are really at play. When the, the the fact that the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is a thing, that it exists, and it's something that, that would come up in a crime, and that you would make assumptions, um, and, and, and an investigation would be swayed by the fact, um, in any direction, by the fact that there was a white woman and a black man both found uh, dead. So there was a particular line that I ended up underlining that I feel it kind of got to like the crux of the novel, uh, of the message. Um, so I don't have the book on me, it's at home. So hopefully I'll remember to to read that to you. But really, really loved it. I gave it four stars. I have a, I have a hard time. Let me know, do you, do you rate like genre fiction, particularly like mystery, um, like mystery, crime, thriller? Do you ever give those five stars? Because for me, a lot of times a five star really has to be, um, tends to be more of classics, literary fiction, that kind of thing. And even my very favorite, like Louise Penny, um, the uh, Armand Gamache series, I basically give all of those four stars. And four star for me is basically like the five star of mystery or crime. So how do you feel about that? Um, and then I was reading, oh, I started Girl, Woman, Other. So instead of getting back into How the Irish Saved Civilization last night, I started Girl, Woman, Other. Because that is one of the books that, it was one of the booktube prize, but actually it won the booktube prize, I think, right? It won the booktube prize. I was a judge for it, but I did full fiction and nonfiction last year. And I just never, it never was in my group. So I didn't get around to, to reading it. I was saving it for when it came around to my group, but then I never got assigned it. So it's a book that I want to finish in 2020. And um, I just read the first maybe 30 pages of it or so. And it's about Alma, who's like a 50 something year old mom and we're um, black lesbian. And she has a daughter, Yaz, I think, or Yaza, something like that. Um, so I'm just loving it. I didn't realize, and it, people have probably mentioned it before, but it's told, I, I guess, is is in verse. The the indentation is weird. Um, 
and there are no periods. So there are, what's interesting, so there are commas and like question marks, but there are no periods. But the way that the lines are done, like in stanzas basically, it doesn't actually seem to be a problem. Um, and it also just really helps it flow. Like I just found myself being able to read it really quite quickly. So I'm really enjoying that. So um, right now I am just leaving the office and I'm heading over to the grocery store to pick some stuff up for the kids. So it's my uh, sister and brother-in-law's anniversary and the kids are staying the night two nights. And tonight is cozy reading night. So I'm hoping that I can get them in on that um, away from screens and let's read some books, kids. Um, and they love tortellini. So I'm going to pick them up some, some of the like the fresh pasta tortellini and then I'm gonna have spaghetti squash and chicken. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully I'll get to read tonight and um, especially after the baby goes down, after the two-year-old goes down around 7.30, 7, 7.30 or so. So, well, maybe earlier because it's getting dark earlier. That'll be good. It's the first time the kids have spent the night since the time changed. So, yeah, hopefully there will be more reading tonight and maybe even Harry Potter. It's cozy reading night. Charlie has her own book. What book do you have? What's in your book? What's that? Back. Bug. Uh huh. It's a bee. What about what's that? This is bee. This is bee. What about? What if we go to the end? <gasps> what are those? Cozy reading is continuing on. Oh, look it. Look it. Oh, are you taking Elmo for a ride? Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, Sam, what are you reading? I'm reading a... I don't really... Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss. It's like an oh, omnibus mm -hmm. or bind-up. Oh, which one are you reading? I'm watching Go Dog Go. Classic. Sammy's learning to read and having a good time. Mm -hmm. Good. And you finished book five yesterday? Yes. Um, now I'm reading The Half Blood Prince. Sweet. Which is actually my favorite book out of all the books. Hmm. Like, I really like five and six, even though they're both very difficult to read in parts. I know. I actually read it in a week. Really? Yes. Awesome. And Stevie. On Subway. Ooh. And cutie mess. Did you know that and there's I, a cutie. That I just and more moving it. mess. Did you know that I skipped like all of this book? Because I didn't want to read any of this. Oh yeah, that's fine. Well that's what's cool about those kind of books is you can choose which one you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and well. I am gonna fall over and kill myself. I'm gonna <laughs> read I think I'm going to do about 20 minutes with How the Irish Saved Civilization. And then I started last night, Girl, Woman, Other. Oh, actually, before I forget, when I was in the car, I was talking about, I found a line that kind of gets to the crux of what Bluebird Bluebird is really about. And it is this. It's just a sentence. Um, what does a W-H make? Okay. What do you think? We haven't learned that in school yet. A W H. That's not a word. Or like -H, what sound is it? Oh, W H. I thought you said A W H. Mm -hmm. Like oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but what does it make? Just like wh oh. wh oh. like what which. There's this like whole story. Like every word has that. Oh. Just it's basically just basically the W sound. Okay, so this sentence um, just kind of epitomizes like the crux of what Bluebird Bluebird is really about. Maybe justice was messier than Darren realized when he'd first pinned a badge to his chest. It was no better or worse than a sieve, a cheap net, a catch-as-catch-can system that gave the illusion of righteousness when really the need for tidy resolution trumped sloppy uncertainty any day. That really gets to the heart of what Bluebird Bluebird is really all about, and I imagine what the whole series is going to be about. So to reading, we just put the baby to bed. It's just after seven. And so I think if we can do a solid hour, we're gonna be good. A 
Okay, so we did not time this great because we're literally starting to read right when the little one just woke up. So there's going to be some distraction. But because she was asleep and I was reading, um, my books were in her room. So I started Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. So it's kind of about um, Ryan Holiday is a big... Moon, yeah. We're watching Ambient World, uh, the Disney World one. And she sees a moon. She sees a moon. Um, Anyway, Ryan Holiday is a big student of the Stoics, and so he's talking about basically the importance of stillness and slowing down, um, controlling like the inputs uh, that we that we take, the information diet. Um, and he uses examples from historical figures, like uh, JFK was one um, that he that he used an example of. So I started that, and I'm really enjoying that. And so now. I think I'm gonna go for a bit of how the Irish save civilization because I need to have this read by next Friday for book club and then get back into girl, woman, other thing. Does anybody else match their bookmark to their book? I can't stand it when they don't match. Okay, we we switched. Fishy? Oh, I think she thinks the dark mark looks like a fishy. Stevie wants to play fetch. We had to change ambient worlds. Now we're on dark arts. Um, what? <laughs> Where's your ball? Where's your ball? What's your ball? Harry's ball. It's under the chair. Like the um, really torn one. It's okay. Hour of reading! Without that tough life, I wouldn't be here. You know. Yeah. Maybe it made me resilient and, and push ahead. Mm hmm Oh, I meant many times I picked myself up by the bootstraps and went on. I would cry and think, can I go on? Can I do this? Can I really go on? And then I'd get up, wash my face. Say, well, I have to go on. Be as independent as you think you can be. Without being, you know, like selfish. Yeah. So it's Sunday afternoon. Um, yesterday was my sister and brother-in-law's 11th wedding anniversary. So the kids spent the night Friday and Saturday. So that's why the kids uh, were with me. Um, we managed to get like two separate hours worth of cozy reading um, between Friday and Saturday. So I would basically kind of like set a limit, like, that there's certain things that they like to watch. YouTube actually being one of them, a particular YouTuber, uh, Zach Scott, who plays, basically they watch Zach Scott play Mario games. Um, and so it's like, what time can we watch Zach Scott? It's always the big thing. So we either watch The Office or they watch Zach Scott. Um, but as to not just sit in front of screens for forever, uh, we had we had like uh, outdoor time and we had reading time and they were both really on board with that. So that was really cool. It's just hard to kind of time it with the baby sometimes. So our second hour of cozy reading, which we did yesterday, didn't go quite as well as the first day because we basically started right when the two-year-old woke up. Um, so it's a little bit hard to focus, but I still had a really great time. So today I got up early to go golf nine holes before church, and then I just went and uh, visited my great grandma. She is 98 and a half. She was born in 1922. Um, so by her count, she's always counting down. As soon as she has a birthday, she's counting down. So she's about three months away from turning 99. Um, so I had a really interesting conversation with her and hopefully the audio will be, will be good. I'll, I'll put some of the conversation in. Part of it that I missed that I wish I had, I had thought to record was she was talking about basically past presidents and she's very much a Democrat. She loves FDR. And we were, we were talking about Eleanor Roosevelt, which then reminded me that Doris recently read a, uh, a biography. I think it was the Doris Kearns Goodwin biography of Eleanor Roosevelt. And she really loved that. And then my grandma was just talking about how amazing and, and smart Eleanor Roosevelt was and how much she did um, behind the scenes and, and helping uh, her husband run the, run the country. And so it made me think, oh, I really, I would really love to read a biography or autobiography of hers. And then I remembered that one of the women's reading um, uh, 
<laughs> I had to stop and look it up because it was driving me crazy. The Reading Women's, uh, the Reading Women's Yearly Reading Challenge, whatever they call that. Um, the challenge to read books by women, about women, put out by the Reading Women. Um, anyway, one of the, one of the, I looked at it recently just to see, um, kind of like how many I had done, um, having not really looked at it since the beginning of the year. And one of them that I definitely haven't done was, uh, a biography, um, about a woman or by a woman or, or, or both. And so I thought, oh, that'd be really good. So I happened to find the Eleanor Roosevelt one on Libby. So I downloaded that. So as soon as I finish my current audiobook, which I just started this morning, which I'll tell you about in a second, um, as soon as I finish that, I will start listening to the Eleanor Roosevelt biography by Doris Kearns Goodwin. I'm blinking on the name of it right now. Um, but anyhow, I thought I would pop over into Half Price Books and see if they had a physical copy of it anyway. They didn't. There was one that they had, I don't remember the author, it was, you know, the book itself was probably like 500 pages and it was volume one. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go with the Doris Kearns Goodwin one um, and listen to that on audiobook. So the audiobook I am listening to is my book club book, which we meet next Friday for, or this, this coming Friday now, um, uh, called When Helping Hurts, which, so I had the physical copy. I had a physical copy, but I realized once I started trying to read it um, yesterday, that it's not the right book. So it's the right, it was in the right arena, but the book I had is supposed to go along with like an online uh, video series. And then you would like meet in small groups and have discussions and everything, but it's the actual book that I'm supposed to be reading. So I managed to find that on Hoopla. So I started reading that this morning and it's very, very much Christian based as um, right now he's kind of setting the stage for giving the uh biblical uh background and um, foundation for why we as christians need to be helping the poor um but his uh where he will be going is basically how can you do that without actually causing more harm um oh anyhow so that's what i'm doing so i am um so there's a wendy's right there um i really want a frosty so i'm gonna go have a frosty um and then i need to go home and do some chores so i'll probably be listening to while i wait in the drive through um and eat my frosty um, and then while i'm cleaning um i'll be listening to when helping hurts and yeah so as soon as i can get all of my stuff done i can get back to how the Irish Save Civilization and Girl Win Other. So last little update, because I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here on how the Irish Save Civilization. So we finally got to the point of like monks in the little honeycomb uh, hut thingies. And although I'm very, very much enjoying the book, um, it I was just actually inside Half Price Books. I was looking in the, the like um, ancient literature section for some of, some, like, some of the Irish uh, what's it called? The, the Tain. I would really like to read The Tain. Uh, they didn't have it. A lot of Homer and Virgil, um, and Ulysses and all that. Uh, Plato. A very small portion of the book is actually the period that it's kind of talked about on the back of the book of the actual transition and the monks, um, actually doing the, the copying, the transcribing, but it's still really, really rich great information and it's it's more setting up like all of this really important cultural valuable religious information would have been lost if it wasn't for these monks doing this so you know i'm like three quarters of the way through it or so um and we we basically just got to that point um with the monks on um what's it called michael skelig I actually saw it, whatever it is. I saw it on a run in Ireland three years ago. We were in the, our, we were staying in Sneem and then we were driven to this like mountain um, and there was a lake on one side and we went, climbed up this mountain. Like I thought my calves were gonna rip off of, uh, of my legs. And um, from up on top of this mountain, we could see this little island um, where, uh, where the monks were um and one of the one of the guys one of the irish guys who was with us told me about it that was uh, uh told me that that's what that was 
this island off in the distance. So I was super excited when I read that in the book and like I looked it up because like I think that's where it was. So you know I was looking at a map and figuring out okay here's Sneem and then that's there and so that was it. So that was really cool um, that I had kind of like a context to place that. But anyhow I'm really enjoying my reading. I'm not enjoying the fact that I have to do other things other than read but that is life. Um, and amazingly, I didn't buy anything in half-price books. So good on me, good self-control. Uh, I had a couple maybes, but I'm just gonna have a little frosty and listen to my free audiobook. So guys, thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.